Today we're going to use Mathematica to answer the question, uh, when I go grocery shopping, what order should I go to pick up my items so that I can get through the store the fastest? So here's just a little example of where we're going with this. So here I have a map of the store um, that uh, you know you can draw or by yourself, or maybe you can find a, a map online or something. Uh, and these black lines here, these are the aisles of the grocery store. And these other things here are, are like stations, things that you can't walk through. So the black is all stuff that you can't walk through. The white is stuff that you can walk on. And you can then take this picture and then run it through image mesh in Mathematica to make a essentially identify the geometric boundaries um, and then triangularize that mesh. In other words, you essentially uh, draw a bunch of triangles inside it. And you can, here I have a little GUI, GUI to show you how you can triangularize a mesh with big triangles, with a big maximum cell measure, which is just the area, the maximum area of, uh, that you're going to allow for the triangles. And if you make a very small maximum size, that means that all the triangles have to be very small. And so you, you get finer uh, spatial resolution. So once you've triangulated the mesh, you can then convert that. Oh, we're just going to use uh, max cell measure 100. So once you've triangulated the mesh, you can then convert that into a graph. Um, and here, this is a this is a, the pictures look kind of the same, but under the hood, they're they're quite different objects. Um, this is a this is a graph, and you can a ask questions like how many vertices, like the little points, does the graph have, or how many edges does it have, or you can ask things like what's the shortest path on the graph that will get you from one vertex to another. And so I have that here. I'm using this, the, the main function here is this find shortest path. And you give it the graph, and then this nearest mesh cells essentially says, take wherever my little uh, locator is and find in the triangulization um, the, the nearest mesh cell uh, to that to that little icon to that little locator. So the the point is is that here I have a little GUI that is that is computing the shortest path along the graph um, from one little from one little target to the other. And I can sort of drag this wherever I want, and it will find uh, the shortest path. So the, there are like super well studied uh, graph algorithms uh, for f at least 50 years that, that do this shortest path. And we're just going to use some of those algorithms to, uh, to solve our little problem today. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Just to show you sort of where we're going, this is, uh, this is my local uh, Albertsons uh, grocery store. And, uh, and I uh, painstakingly mapped out uh, on the aisles, d w which aisles and where they are in the aisles of the various things I like to eat. So uh, here I have the entrance of the store, the exit of the store, and, uh, and here's all the things on my little shopping list. And, uh, and you can see that this, is th this program that we're going to talk about has mapped out a path of how I should work my way through the store. And the different colors are simply just different. Going from one item to another, the color changes. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about this. Um, so the first step is to import uh, a picture of what the store looks like. So I just built this in uh, in Mac Keynote, um, just right here. I just uh, you know drew some lines and dragged them around, and here's my text and everything. And I just put in the the, the aisle numbers here. Um, you know the, the the produce section is over here. The meats, uh, the deli is in the back. Over here is the sort of the hot food counter. Um, yeah. So I just drew this up and uh, exported it to a JPEG and imported that JPEG into Mathematica. Um, this next line here uh, takes this image, and the main thing that it does is it wipes out, it deletes all the numbers, uh, deletes small components. So anything that, any chunk of, of contiguous pixels is a component, and uh, any chunk that's smaller than 700 pixels is going to be wiped out. And so that gets rid of the numbers. We do the same trick as before. We mesh the image. We triangularize uh, the mesh. Uh, and we, I picked a pretty small cell measure here, so, so um, uh, we would get good, nice, good spatial resolution. Um, and it does make things take a little longer, but I've pre-rendered everything for you. We'll graph it up. We'll, we'll make a graph out of the triangularization. Um, and this graph is so big that Mathematica doesn't even want to show it to me uh, with uh, by default. It just wants to say, hey, this is a graph object. Um, and you can see some nice statistics about it. It's got 14,000 vertices and 40,000 edges. And you can, you can f tell Mathematica, no, I really want to see this graph, please. And it'll take a couple seconds, but it draws it out for you. So this is, these are the, the, this is the graph that we're going to be traversing as we make our way through the store. Um, so, okay, 
uh, we can ask, so this is called mesh graph, because that's the graph we made from the mesh. You can ask, uh, give me all the list of all the vertices. There's 14,000, like we were seeing before. And this is kind of interesting. The vertices here have, the names of the vertices are actually pairs. And the reason for this is that when you triangularize, or when you when you get the a graph out of a triangularization, it, it remembers that these are points. These were originally points in the triangularization. So this is point number one, point number two, point number three, and so on. So the zero here doesn't really mean anything besides just this is uh, a vertex that was made uh, from a triangularized, uh, from points on a triangularized uh, mesh. Okay, and here they go all the way up to point number 14,000. You can ask for the edges of the mesh graph. Um, there's 40,000 of them. And here you see an edge is just uh, this funny symbol uh, with a little, the little, looks like a little dumbbell here. Um, here I can make this a little bigger for you. Um, this little dumbbell, uh, if you look for the help here, it just says, oh, this thing is just an undirected edge. This is short for the function undirected edge of u comma v. Um, and so uh, this is saying this is an undirected edge. In fact, here, let me just show you. If I say undirected edge of u comma v, um, it will just draw that as u comma v like that. Um, and if I, yeah, okay, so that's, that's how that works. Um, Oopsie daisy, let me get my list of edges back again. Okay, so here's an edge that connects uh, vertex 0, 1 to the vertex 0, 0, 13,000, blah, blah. Okay, so now one important detail is that when we're doing these like shortest path graph algorithms, let me go back up here to my little cute picture, shortest path graph algorithms by default are using uh, you know are hopping along these edge weights of this graph and the, the, well they're hopping along the edges of the graph and the edge weights all have edge weight 1 unless you specify something else so so this this the the cost the length of this graph is not actually the length of the pixels from here to there but is actually the number of hops that you do now this is going to be pretty close to the uh you know, some constant times the length, uh, average length of the triangle, uh, of the triangle. But, but uh, just to make things extra precise, we we actually are going to build a new graph whose edges are weighted by their Euclidean distance. Um, so, in order to do that, we need to get the position, the uh, the the coordinate position of all of the points in the graph, and that's called the embedding of the graph. Uh, an embedding of a graph is just how you have chosen to draw it out. Uh, it's the it's the graph along with every vertex's um, uh, uh, coordinate position, like in Euclidean uh, space. Okay, so here this uh, this it, coordinate here, uh, this the x comma y is the uh, is the coordinate position of vertex one, um, and this is the coordinate position x and y of vertex two, and so on. Okay, and so here is just a, a simple dictionary in Mathematica, it's called an association uh, that maps uh, each vertex to its coordinate position. So here's the first, ver uh, here's the first vertex in its coordinate position, second vertex in its coordinate position, and so on. Okay, so here we are building a new graph. We're going to make a new graph called weighted mesh graph. That's a graph, and you give it, you can give it the list of vertices and the list of edges, and then the edge weight is going to be specified like this any two edges, uh, sorry, any two vertices that are connected via an edge, so this is this edge from u to v, should have the edge weight that is the Euclidean distance of take u and v, these two vertices that are specified in this vertex list, and figure out their coordinate position. So figure out their coordinate positions, the Euclidean distance between those two is the edge weight for that edge, u comma v. Um, and, uh, and how should we draw them out? Well, let's just tell the vertex coordinates to just be whatever the coordinates were of the original graph. So this takes about a minute and a half to do because this is such a big graph. But when you're done, you have a very nice graph that looks exactly the same as the first one, except it has uh, the edge weights that correspond to the Euclidean distances. And that means that when we run our graph algorithms, they will actually be representing distance traveled. Um, Okay, so just to be totally clear here, um, here let's take uh, just as an example of the distances. Let's take the edge list, take the first one, and uh, 
take the first element of that edge list and then instead of having it be an undirected edge we'll just uh, wipe out undirected edge make it a list and so in other words we're just saying grab me the first two vertices the, the vertices of the first edge and how far apart are they well in the original mesh graph they're just a distance one apart because it's an unweighted graph but in the weighted graph the distance between the two vertices is this 16.8 now, what is that 16.8? Well, if you take the coordinates of these two vertices, like the Euclidean coordinates, x, comma, y, and look for the Euclidean distance between them, you get 16.8. So you get the same thing. So this is just a little bit of reassurance that the graph that we've built, this weighted mesh graph, has edge weights that are uh, whose distances, when you use graph distance, will be the Euclidean distances. OK, so now it's time for some fun. So we have our CSV file here. Um, this is a CSV file that came from, I'm not gonna try to find it right now, but it's a, it's a, uh, a grocery list um, uh, spreadsheet, essentially. And the first, uh, first row of this thing is just the name and location and everything. Actually, let me show it to you because that's actually, it's actually kind of cute. Um, here, okay, so um, let's see. Here is my, here's the grocery list. And so essentially the, uh, the entrance and the exit are, are rows in here, just for sort of uh, note uh, bookkeeping purposes. But everything else is like the different kind of things you might buy at the store. Um, where are they in the store? Um, the, actually, the most important thing are the coordinates, the X and Y coordinates. And I actually found these by, uh, let's see, in, in Mathematica, you can pull up any image and say, I want to pick some coordinates of this thing. And you can start clicking around, and it will record all those coordinates. And then you can just copy those coordinates and paste them up and now you have now you have um the the uh, you know sub pixel uh coordinates of that image so i did that um for this uh for this thing let's get back to where we were um and that's how i got the x and y coordinates which i just pasted back into the spreadsheet so i went shopping uh yesterday and tallied up do we do i need uh you know do i need various things uh and i left it blank if i don't need it so I could then import that into uh, into this uh, program here. So the header row is just the first row, obviously. The second, uh, all the subsequent rows, what are we going to do? We're going to import this thing, and then some of the rows didn't have coordinates because I didn't know where they were in the store. So I want to keep only the I want to keep only the rows that have a couple of integers in the middle of them that corresponds to these integers here there aren't pairs of integers anywhere else in this in this spreadsheet so it's a little bit hacky but at the end of the day we get these rows and the rows have this form so here is one of the rows um, here's the the first row the entrance one uh, here's the next row okay and so this is just it's just a list the rows this whole spreadsheet was imported as just a list of of rows and each row is itself a list of, uh, of strings and numbers so um, okay, so let's uh, let's get the entrance coordinate and the exit coordinates. Um, and uh, the, here we're actually just searching the rows for the word entrance and the word exit. So that's a little bit hacky. We get the uh, essentially the indices. We, I tried to make this kind of robust um, so that you could uh, it wouldn't be super brittle if I changed something in the spreadsheet. But essentially we get all of the all of the items from the spreadsheet. Get the shopping list by picking only the item names whose corresponding I need it row is yes. Um, and then uh, essentially tack on the entrance and exit. Uh, so in a sense, you need to, you need, not only do you need all the things on the shopping list, but you also need to start at the entrance and need to leave at the exit. Um, okay, and then very similar to before, we just make a dictionary that maps the name of something to its coordinates. And so, for example, where are the avocados? In this, at this coordinate. Where's the milk? At this coordinate. Where's the entrance of the store? At this coordinate. So armed with that, we can then, let's see, we'll make some uh, graphics. So this little leading G here is just my convention, my own personal convention for these are some graphics. And these graphics, here, let me just split this cell up so you can see the difference between them. Um, G item names this thing is uh, a bunch of texts so uh, g item names is just a table of text values and for every string in item names in all item names we're just going to display that text um, uh, the the actual text itself and then where should we put that text well how about we'll use our clever little association that maps an item to its coordinates and then we'll make a background the background of that text will be well if we need it if it's a member of the shopping list it should be pink in other words hey like attention you need to get this thing otherwise it can be light blue we don't need this thing 
Um, so here is the here is the the, the text values that we made, um, and then we should show them with un, on the backdrop of the uh, of the store. So here is if you had a map of the store and you had highlighted everything that you needed to get at the store. Here is that that picture. Now the next uh, thing to do is figure out what is the best way to get from the entrance stopping by all of these red items that you need to pick up and then leaving at the exit. So you can sort of see that like okay it looks like we'll sort of work our way towards the back of the store like in this sort of diagonal and then we'll kind of work our way down towards the produce here and we'll end up at the exit. But there's some questions of like, well, how should you get like this red wine, which is over here, or this prosciutto? Like, how, what's the right order to sort of hit those? Should you like still sort of go up through the middle and then work your way around like clockwise or what? So we're going to figure that out now. So we, uh, we grab the item coordinate. So our shopping list is a list of all of the things that we need to get. It's not all the items in the store. It's the subset of items that we need. Um, then we uh, map over that this item to coordinate. So here are the coordinates of all the things that we need to get. Uh, we can convert those coordinates into vertices in the graph by asking for the nearest mesh cells and then uh, uh, applying nearest mesh cells, mapping this, this function here over every coordinate. So now these are vertices in this graph that we're interested in. And just as an example to show that this is working, um, here let's here's the shortest path. Let's find the shortest path in our weighted graph that goes from the first uh, vertex, the first item to the last item. Now the first item and the last item uh, were just the entrance and the exit. Let's see, item. Uh, well, it would be the shopping, the shopping list. The first one and the last one are the entrance and the exit. And uh, and so here is the path, the shortest path on the weighted graph that goes from the, the entrance to the exit. So we can just sort of show this in a cute way. Um, uh, we'll make, we'll make so a couple of little text cells like you saw before, and then we'll uh, show that uh, graph, the weighted mesh graph with the path graph uh, of the shortest path uh, highlighted here. So here you can see from entrance to exit, um, you, you know, obviously you just go in a straight line. Now like keep in mind that there are a huge number of possible paths that go from the entrance to the exit and some pretty sophisticated graph algorithms were at play in order to figure out what path will go from entrance to exit it, it's it yeah okay so <laughs> it looks pretty obvious but um but there's some a lot of fancy stuff going on under the hood okay so now we need to find the best order to visit all these items and the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a new graph uh, where that has one vertex per item in our shopping list. And we are going to, uh, that's a much, much smaller graph. This graph has 14,000 vertices, but our shopping list only has 63 items. So we're going to make 60, a, a, a new graph that has 63 vertices and the edge between any two vertices is going to just be the graph distance in the weighted graph, like going through the store between those two vertices. So this takes about a minute to run because um, there's for every pair of items in the store, including the entrance and exit, we're computing the graph distance on this graph. So we're doing this shortest graph algorithm for, ev for 63 squared uh, items. And once we do that, um, we can make a graph from this distance matrix and then ask for the shortest path that goes in this graph that goes from the first item to the last item. And here they are, the items are just numbered here. But if we wanted to say, if we wanted to say, show me the, um, uh, the actual, let's see, blah. What are the order of the items that I should pick them up? I start at the entrance. That's this vertex number one, and I start out getting fancy cheese, and that kind of makes sense because the fancy cheese is over here near the near the entrance. And then I work my way through the store. You, I end up going through close to the exit. So we're going to end up at the exit, and we do a bunch of produce. We get the produce last. Okay, so that is um, that's a good sign. That's a sign that it's working, and. 
uh, check this out. The, the distances are preserved between the, uh, this item graph that we just made. And so just to be totally clear, this item graph is a very small graph. Like it is a complete graph. So every vertex is connected to every other vertex, but there's only, uh, there's only a few, uh, there's only 63 vertices instead of there being a bazillion, uh, like 14,000. Okay, but nevertheless, the path, the the distance between the first thing, the first item that you hit, and the second item that you should hit, in other words, between entrance and fancy cheese, is 262 uh, you, pixels, Euclidean distance. Um, that is the same as if you went to the weighted mesh graph, and you tr found the shortest distance that went from the first item vertex. So this this first item vertex here, this is like some weird vertex. The first uh, item of this path here is just is just one it's just it's just the uh, it's it's the vertex in the item graph not the mesh graph okay and you get the same distance so the distance between um, the distances are, are preserved okay great um, this is another example of that where if you sum up if you go along the entire path and you partition up that path so you're visiting pairs of vertices in order and then you ask how far did I go from vertex 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4 this is how far you'll go the whole time and you get the same answer if you ask that same question only going along the weighted mesh graph uh, for these vertices that you specify um, in the path okay uh, now one more thing here. So this is uh, this is the shortest distance that goes through all of the items coordinates, but you get to move through the walls. This is just you he, here. You're given a list of coordinates, and you get to, you have to pass through these coordinates in you in the Euclidean plane in the shortest uh, the shortest path possible, uh, starting at the first one and ending at the last one. Um, and so this is the length here is ignoring the boundaries in other words ignoring the aisles ignoring any sort of walls or anything and and so this path that you are traversing doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily the shortest path when you constrain it to the when you're constrained to not walk through the walls um, and so if you ask for what is the graph distance in the actual graph if I were to traverse these this, these items in order um, you actually get you, you will end up walking a lot farther than if you go the the optimal one um, so this is just a minor point but just it would be very natural for you to to try to think well I'm just gonna ignore the walls and just do like a normal uh, minimizing you know minimal tour um, ignoring the walls ignoring these occlusions but you, you can't do that if you if you ignore the occlusions first of all yeah if you ignore the occlusions you're gonna walk a lot farther than you you would have to Okay, so this is sort of the, the final thing. Um, we make a bunch of path graphs for every, uh, for every pair of vertices in our path, um, and then we highlight it and, and show it all here. So this is kind of the, uh, this is the, the order that you should visit the vertices. So start at, you start at the entrance and you, you walk along here. Now here the light pink is showing you the order that you would hit the vertices if you ignored all the walls, if you tried to ignore the walls. And this is, so keep in mind, this is actually a lot farther than uh, if you take into account the occlusions, the aisles and so on. Um, but yeah, so essentially, if you follow the uh, the little dotted path here, you will. This is the shortest path that will go through all of the items that you need to get on your list. Um, one thing here, the text sort of looks all crammed in the produce section, but um, let me let me just show you one more thing. So here's the zoom in of the produce section, and you can actually see that you know there aren't occlusions in the produce section, and so the shortest path that that uh, that you will uh, that you should do when you constrain yourselves to the mesh graph is the same is pretty much the same order that you hit things if you are totally unconstrained not even constrained to the vertices of the mesh graph so this is exactly what you would expect you would expect that without any occlusions I'm gonna visit these uh, items in sort of the shortest path order um, then I can just uh, ignore any occlusions because there are no occlusions. But when you when there are occlusions, heavy occlusions like these aisles, these long aisles here, and you can see that you have to do ridiculous things like skip over and over the ends of these aisles, um, it does make a big difference. Um, one, I mean, you can see here that the order, like the shortest distance uh, path would have you like shoot through all try to shoot through all these walls and and so the order that you would visit these items is just totally different 
Okay, just to sort of uh, show this, I've exported this um, this map as a PDF of various sizes, and uh, let's have a look. So here you can you can sort of zoom in, you can sort of zoom in and see like uh, you know the various little pieces here. So here you are getting the the yeast, and then you go around the corner and pick up the pasta, but then you don't go any farther down this aisle because you can just sort of skirt around these uh, these end caps here. And at one point you do have to go all the way down. Uh, and then do a U-turn to get this uh, the salad dressing, and you can just run down the rest of the aisle and pick up these things. So um, it it looks like uh, is on one hand it seems like kind of obvious some of the decisions that it makes, like oh yeah you should maybe go here first because you're never going to be this close again. But then you know uh, it 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 deviates from your intuition pretty quickly. Um, cool. Thank you for watching.